We're going to start uh, with the only piece on the program that uh, isn't an original. It's a cover. It's a piece that you probably have heard before. It's called Genossian Number no. 3. It's by Eric Satie. Uh, I'm probably correct in thinking you've never heard it played, though, on an instrument like this. And we thought it'd be a nice way to introduce the uh, the instrumentation, the unusual instrumentation that Van Eng plays uh, with something that you know. You've probably heard this many times before. So here we go.
the next piece is uh, an old one of mine. I think I wrote this in about 1988 and uh, performed it for a long time with a, kind of a free jazz group that used electronics called Room, uh, which included Larry Oakes and William Wynett, some of the uh, well-known musicians of the Bay Area. Um, and uh, somehow when Van Eng and I started to work together, um, she wanted to see some of the pieces that I'd written. And this one really, uh, she took a liking to. Uh, and she, the amazing thing is that she's playing it on the, the Dan Trang, uh, which is normally tuned pentatonic. Uh, and this is a very chromatic melody. So uh, I'm, I'm always amazed that uh, she finds a way with, by bending pitches on the instrument to get all the notes. And uh, anyway, the, the idea of the piece though, it's called Hall of Mirrors, and it begins with a theme that is uh, unadulterated instrumental composition. And then after that, we move into the adult area and start <laughs> processing the sounds. And uh, basically, it's like walking into, from outside, into a room that's full of mirrors because there are a lot of delays that pick up each of the instruments at seemingly random moments and then transform them in different ways. And we improvise through themes in the, in the music, kind of like a jazz improvisation, but in an electronic music uh, hall of mirrors. So here it is.
Next, we're, uh, Van Eng is going back to play the down bow again, so you get to hear more of that. And this is the first uh, piece we actually made together and came out of our mutual interest in uh, the sliding aspects of playing uh, Vietnamese music. And uh, Van Eng, if you would say something about the importance of the left hand in Vietnamese music, this impressed me and got us started in this improvisation. Uh, yes, so uh, when I first worked with Chris, um, you know, we, tr we try to find a way and then um, talk a lot about uh, Vietnamese traditional music to get understanding and start our collaboration. And when I told Chris that the Vietnamese music, the soul of Vietnamese music actually lies in our left hand. So, um, because um, our language is with six different tones, so it, you can you can have the same spelling, but it will have six different meaning if you change the tone. Um, and so so our music also just change with that change of the language. So so we use a lot of left hand to vibrate to do the um, you know characteristics, and the left hand not only to help in ch changing the tone, but it also um, help to. Um, uh, to tell you what kind of music genre and where, which region that the music comes from. And of course it takes a long time to really know, but um, in the traditional music when I started study with my masters, they always tell me that be very careful how I vibra vibrate and do all the bending note because I can in a second playing northern um, traditional music, but then in a second I just play music from the south of Vietnam. So it's just very critical like that. And, and so when Chris learned about it, and he came up with the piece that we call Two Left Hands. <laughs> <laughs> and that's because the uh, electronic instrument I was working with was a, a small keyboard that had a little dome controller on it and would allow me to make gestures where I could change three uh, parameters at the same time. And I was kind of really enjoying that aspect of the instrument. Uh, you know, as a keyboard player, normally you play the note and it stays there. Uh, it doesn't slide around a lot. So I found this was a way to get around that. And so I'm using my left hand to basically replay melodies that I'm capturing from Van Eng. So she's playing this beautiful one string instrument and I'm, I have an electronic signal from her that I can track uh, exactly the shapes of the pitches that she's making. And it puts it into my computer and then I can play them back. So it's like I'm resampling just the melody and I can apply it to different voices. So um, we're doing an improvisation on that form of reflection, uh, really. So here we go, we'll see how it goes this time.
Okay, and the last piece we're going to play is, is brand new, and it's, um, I think, quite different. It uses a, um, a lot of rhythmic uh, interaction between the computer and uh, two percussionists. Ben, I'm going to play the tarung, which is a, a instrument. You want to say a little bit about where it's from? Yeah, um, the tarung, bamboo xylophone, you give uh, so it comes from South Island of Vietnam, and originally the tribal people up there just use a, the bamboo tube to uh, tie it up together and put on the rice field to scare away the birds. And the instrument, um, this instrument was developed into um, to use in concert just about like uh, around 80 years ago. And this is the only instrument that we have. Uh, uh, chromatic system and the rest is pentatonic. So, um, and the shape of the instrument is just like the shape of the houses in um, South Island of Vietnam. So maybe in the future, if you go to visit Vietnam, you may remember about our concert tonight. And uh, the second performer is Nava Dunkelman, who is going to join us for the piece, and she'll be playing uh, a set of six 
uh, flat gongs from the Philippines. Um, these are uh, instruments that come from the northern uh, Cordillera region of Luzon, the northernmost island of the Philippines, and were played uh, by tribal people in uh, family celebrations and things like that. And I, I happened to grow up for four years in the Philippines and remember hearing these sometimes there and always had a fondness for their timbre and eventually came to be able to get some from uh, hand carried from Luzon uh, by a fr good friend who is, has relatives there. So uh, she'll be playing these gongs and from those gongs I've taken a melody, uh, basically a scale and I'm playing patterns in rhythms that are always changing either by a little or by a lot and uh, what's I guess uh, different than uh, uh, the normal composing of a, a part that musicians play along with is in this case the exact pitch, pitches and notes that are played are different every time because they're made up uh, on the spot by the computer programmer by the, I mean not the programmer but by the program and uh, in that way they don't really know exactly what they're going to be responding to but they're kind of interacting with the part that's being generated in real time meanwhile the form is set and we go through a, a predictable series of curves. Uh, I guess maybe that's the theme tonight, is curves as a, as a structural influence. Anyway, uh, this piece is called The Thorn, and uh, we can talk about later why it's called that. Uh, yeah, here it is.